Hello, it's Sarah. I'm here with you for another um, reading from Charles Spurgeon, Morning and Evening, um, September 16th. Morning. Partakers of the Divine Nature, 2 Peter 1, 4. To be a partaker of the Divine Nature is not, of course, to become God. That cannot be. The essence of deity is not to be participated in by the creature, and between the creature and the creator there will always be a fixed gulf in terms of essence. But as the first man, Adam, was made in the image of God, so we, by the renewal of the Holy Spirit, are in a diviner, didn't know that was a word, diviner sense, made in the image of the Most High, and we are partakers of the divine nature. We are by grace made like God. God is love, 1 John 4, 8. And we become love. Whoever loves has been born of God. 1 John 4, 7. God is truth, and we become true, and we love what's true. God is good, and he makes us good by his grace, so that we become the pure in heart who will see God. Moreover, we become partakers of the divine nature in even a higher sense than this. In fact, in as lofty a sense as can be conceived, short of our being absolutely divine. Do we not become members of the body of the divine person of Christ? Yes, the same blood that flows in the head flows in the hand, and the same life that quickens Christ quickens his people. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Colossians 3.3 3. As if this were not enough, we are married to Christ. He has betrothed us to himself in righteousness and in faithfulness, and he who is joined to the Lord is one with him. Marvelous mystery. We look into it, but who will understand it? One with Jesus. So much so, the branch is not more one with the vine than we are part of the Lord, our Savior, and our Redeemer. While we rejoice in, his, in this high and holy relationship, in their relationships with others, and will make it evident in our daily walk, and conversation. I need to reread that. Sorry. While we rejoice in this, let us remember that those who are made partakers of the divine nature will display this high and holy relationship in their relationships with others and will make it evident in their daily walk and conversation that they have escaped the corruption in the world through lust. Oh, for more divine holiness of life. A really good one. I like that. Evening. Am I the sea or sea monster that you set a guard over me? Job 7 12. This was a strange question for Job to ask the Lord. He felt himself to be too insignificant to be so strictly watched and chastened. And he hoped that he was not so unruly as to need to be restrained. The inquiry, inquiry was natural from one surrounded by such mis miseries, but after all, it's capable of a very humbling answer. It's true that man is not the sea, but he is even more troublesome and unruly. The sea obediently respects its boundaries, and it does not overleap the limit, even though it's just a belt of sand. Mighty as it is, it hears the divine thus far, and then raging with tempest, it still respects the word. Self-willed man however, defies heaven and oppresses earth, and there's no need to his rebellious rage. The sea obedient to the moon ebbs and flows with ceaseless, re ceaseless regularity and so renders an active um, as well as a passive obedience. But man, restless beyond his sphere, sleeps within the lines of duty, lazy where he should be active. He neither comes nor goes at the divine command, but sullenly prefers to do what he should not, and to leave undone what's required of him. Pebble, sorry, every drop in the ocean, every beaded bubble, and every yeasty foam flake, every shell and pebble, feel the power of law, and yield or move at once. If only our nature were but one thousandth as much conformed to the will of God, we call the sea fickle and false. But how constant is it? How constant it is since our father's days and even before the sea is where it was, beating on the same cliffs to the same tune. We know where to find it. It never hides and its ceaseless pounding never fades. But where is man, O oh fickle man? Can the wise man guess by what folly will be next 
or he will next be seduced from in his obedience. We need more watching than the billowy sea and are far more rebellious, Lord. Rule us for your own glory. Amen. I really like that one too. I'm really thinking about what I'm going to um, share more on from this last week. There's so many that I, I like this week. So I'll get back to you. And until then, happy Wednesday. This is Sarah. God bless. And goodbye.